Welcome to another episode of What's Up Pasadena. Pasadena has always been rich with an abundance of culture, events, and personality, and we're giving you just a taste of what you'll find. On this episode, we indulge ourselves in all things British, walk along rows of colorful produce at a Pasadena farmer's market, stop by Pasadena City College for a Q&A session, and take you to some of the Pasadena locations that have graced the silver screen. Even if the UK is 5,000 miles and an ocean away, you can still find a piece of the old country here in Pasadena, whether it's in a pub, a tea house, or on a bowling green. We are at Central Park in Pasadena and we're at the Pasadena Croquet Club and Lawn Bowling Club. This court is used for croquet now and the south court is used for the lawn bowlers. And we now give free lessons almost every Saturday at 11 o'clock. My family played it quite a bit in the summers. And so I always loved croquet. And then when I saw that they gave free lessons in this version of croquet, I thought, well, let me try it out. And I've, I've, I've enjoyed it immensely ever since my first lesson. What's so wonderful about croquet is it doesn't take a lot of strength or a lot of skill. It's a lot of strategy. But this version, you can learn really in one lesson out here with us and start playing right away. When I started learning about the history of croquet and was actually started, you can date it back to things like King Arthur's Court where they played a style of croquet in, in a lawn around the castle. And it comes from this very proper English background where it mostly was a sport of the wealthy and they play it on Sunday afternoons with all their friends. But now, especially in the Pasadena Croquet Club, it's become way more accessible. And I feel like I'm, I'm tapping into my heritage and uh, I'm not only playing for myself, I'm playing for my ancestors as well. And it's a, it's a real traditional sport. This is the only croquet club in the Los Angeles area. And we have some social events and we have some events that aren't just competitive croquet, but we also have some tournaments that are lots of fun. We're all a huge friendly group of people and we love to answer questions about croquet and kind of expand the sport. Once you start playing it, it is incredibly addictive and a whole lot of fun. And it's a beautiful park. I mean, what, where could you get such a beautiful area just to play a sport? So we've been here for 21 years. We opened in 1996. And uh, my business partner and I, David Farnworth, who has since deceased in 2011, decided to open up a pub. The building is very pub-like and although uh, owning an establishment like this, that it's all hokey pokey and there's rooms upstairs and downstairs and around the corner. It gives so much feel to what a pub really is. Our English fare is still very, very prevalent in our food. The bar took on a different angle and we moved more into the European style. Predominantly more Belgian beers uh, came into play. There was a ton of British people that were here from either Ireland or you know followers of U2 and they just seek us out because this was a this, this place was packed full of people that had come over following the band and were then going to go on and watch the group. We also show live soccer at the weekends or during the week. We wear many different hats. We do all sorts of things throughout the day. So it's a very fun and uh, European feeling here. David and I wanted to create something that was very casual, very welcoming, as if you're coming into our home, and someplace that you can come and relax and enjoy and you're not shuffled on. The history of the T. Rose Garden is really interesting. It was actually two sisters, um, the Kim sisters, and they actually founded a little tiny shop down the street. Uh, they just wanted to give comfort in the daily grind. Um, so they wanted florals and fresh tea, which were the things that really made them happy. And it grew since then, and that's why we're at this big location now. So we've been around since 94. I think at Tea Rose Garden, um, our service is very botanical. We like to be inspired by fresh flowers, um, since we are part floral shop. So you'll see a lot of edible flower petals on it. Um, you'll see a lot of like garden herbs. We have a turkey basil, that sort of thing. I think the reason why we have patrons come is we've been around for so long for one and that's a definite plus. Like we've seen people who have had their baby showers here are now throwing their bridal showers for their children and it's sort of become this tradition. It's got that mix of being a little high class but at the same time coming in and just being yourself. 
So it's, it's that little extra special treatment through the day. We do serve on mismatched bone china. We try to bring in that element. So we bring in that sense of entertaining and style that the British have and that very quintessential like hostess type of atmosphere. So I guess if you want that kind of at home or in a cottage sort of feel, we have that for you and you don't really have to go too far. It's a treat that people give themselves and over the ages, it's just something that never seems to get old. Whether you fancy a pint, a spot of tea, or a rousing round of croquet, there's no need to cross the pond to experience the British lifestyle. You can have a smashing time with your mates right here in Pasadena. Cheers. Did you know volunteering can be fun? Community service is for everyone young people, families, men and women. As a Pasadena Lion volunteer, you will help your community and gain valuable skills, network with others, energize your life, make an impact, and have fun. Make a difference in your community. Volunteer. To learn more, visit PasadenaHostLions.org. See you there. Every Saturday, rain or shine, the Farmer's Market at Victory Park offers fresh fruits and veggies straight from the farm to your kitchen table. Here you can get a little sunshine and mingle with your neighbors while searching for that perfect avocado. This market started in 1984 in March. Our Pasadena Villa Park Market started in June of 1980. We were the second and this market was the 16th market in Los Angeles County. There are now 140 plus markets in Los Angeles County and over 800 in the state where farmers can sell directly to the public. This is where you come, you see your neighbors, you, you see people from Little League, you see people from maybe your business, you stop and chat for just a moment. I really like the farmer's market because you get a fantastic selection of fresh produce here and you get to meet the farmers who are growing it so you can have a personal relationship with the people who you're buying from and who are growing your food. We have people who have made very close friendships with the people that they buy their food from. They know where it's coming from, they know the, the seller, whether the seller is from the farm or whether the seller is an employee, they know the families. I will always go to the same few places. I'll look at the other places while I'm here, but I know I'm going to go to the same people for oranges, for fresh vegetables, for uh, there's a really good vendor here who makes fantastic uh, granola that I get. Usually we get about 2,000 people. We now have 42 certified producers, which is the farmer side, and we have uh, 14 different food artisans, breads, fish, jams. We are urban growers, but we are part of a larger program. We are teaching K, pre-K through 12th grade and our focus right now is yes farming and seeding and growing and producing all of these beautiful products that you see behind me but we are going straight to the student to take the farm to the student at their school. We are the first certified farm for producing spirulina in the state of California. We work very closely with the Department of Agriculture, the State Department of Agriculture, to certify our farm as a food producer of spirulina uh, versus a dietary supplement producer. We grow it hydroponically and it is also one of the most nutritious foods in the world. Are you getting cheers with me? Yes, I am. Excellent. All right, cheers. To, to your I'm, health. I'm super nervous. <laughs> Enjoy. I'm nervous. Ooh. Oh, actually it's fine. Yeah, yeah, it's good. I feel healthy. In order to participate in the Certified Farmer's Market, you must be a certified grower where the county agriculture goes to your property, lists everything that you're growing, and you pay the fee to them. That's your process. You grow it, you pick it, you pack it, you bring it, you sell it. My granddaughter right now is 14. When she was little, we always wanted to get organic fruit and vegetable for them. So I took them here and they played with the drummer, they play with the musician, and we do the shopping. This is the place we have to shop to support the local farmers. 
If you're at a farmer's market and you can smell the peaches or you smell the strawberries as you're walking up, there's gonna be something that you've never seen before. You stand, you look at it, you say, I don't know what that is, and the customer next to you is gonna tell you how they prepare it. Because this is where it's hands-on. If you used to go to the butcher, the baker, and the candlestick maker, well, that's coming to the farmer's market. And markets should be part of the community, and we in Pasadena offer the nonprofits the ability to distribute information about their particular programs. And this is where you, you find out. You might run into the mayor, you might run into your city council person, you might run into your best friend that you haven't seen since high school. You just never know. Hi there, I'm Amaris and I would like to tell you about Remainders Creative Reuse. We're a nonprofit centered around creating art with recycled and upcycled materials. We have classes for everything from sewing to sculpture, painting to printmaking. Remainders is for everyone, from toddlers to grandmothers. My mom Robin is the founder and we work together with many generous volunteers to provide a space of creativity, sustainability, and togetherness here in Pasadena. We invite you to join us and get creative. We're here at the Pasadena City College campus to give students a break from their studies and ask them some fun questions. Well, what I really like about Pasadena is that it's like a really good community. Everything works together. There's great food here. There's this little alleyway where they have the IPIC theater. I love hanging out over there when it's at night with the, the lights. It's nice out here. I love Old Town. I like hanging around right there with my friends, go to a bar, you know, once in a while and just, you know, be in a good term of the night, you know. Well, I love that everyone's super friendly, there's always a food place, and everyone's just willing to share things with you and just, you know, give you the vibes that you, like, you want. <laughs> so what I love about Pasadena is, like, the places here. Like, location's really great. We're known for, their, like, the Rose Bowl, the Rose Parade. I really like um, the college in particular. Um, like, all the stuff that's here to do. Like, you got Romans over there, a lot of great... Uh, stores and stuff like that. The culture is just really great. It's a very city feel, but at the same time, it still has an old school charm to it, and it's, it's just a very pretty city, you know? Because I can see the mountain whales and very clearly. I like the diversity and the atmosphere around here. I love uh, Pasadena for its vibrant energy, location, and the weather is just awesome. Favorite thing to do in the summer is hang out with friends and go in the pool, go to the beach, go out and eat, and you know, just hang out and have a good time. My favorite thing to do in the summer is to run. I love running. Like, I'll go out probably at this time around. People are like, what are you doing? I'm like, running, you know? Like, I love it. Like, that's what I do. Just sit under a tree and play guitar. Uh, I would definitely say the beach since I am a California kid. And just hang out with my friends, listen to music, go to concerts. Yo, oh, man. I could do it all. I mean, I skate, I surf. Definitely go to the beach. Yeah, going to the beach is fun during summer. Activities, projects, I'll do, I used to do summer plays and stuff like that. Basically anything I could do that would be, you know, I, I need to be engaged and I really like uh, doing that kind of stuff. I don't want to laze around and do nothing. During the summer, I love to spend time with the family, whether it's uh, picnicking or just spending time around the house. We need to have more love and a connection with people. I would definitely say as a black female, it would definitely be racism since like, um, I don't know, just on a, not on a day-to-day -day basis, but being black in like America at all, like it is something that you deal with on like, on heavy enough of a level that it is like, it will always be an issue. I just want us to be able to take care of each other and want us to succeed as people. Probably the LGBTQ. Big social issue that I've been noticing a lot is like social isolation. Like, uh, you see a lot of people, a lot of, uh, you know, with the rise of social media and stuff like that, uh, people are not actually communicating anymore. They're they're just communicating vicariously through social media and stuff like that, and they're not actually 
talking to people face to face. Uh, that society only shows black people as either we can only play sports, uh, rap, or be in the streets as our only sense of uh, things, jobs and things we can do. Like they never show us on TV being doctors, lawyers, and all that stuff. It's only the bad stuff. I think the most important social issue for me is the discrepancy between the rich and the poor. Um, I do believe that, yes, it is kind of an economic problem, but at the same time, economics is um, very intertwined with social issues. Well, I'm actually studying to be an RN, so I'm going to change the world by helping people with their health and making sure everybody's healthy and doing the best for their body. I plan to be a programmer and I hope to make, uh, I don't know yet, but I plan to build an app that will hopefully change people's minds. and By motivating my friends to do better and motivating my friends to stay in school. Give out people the energy they need to keep on going. I might not make it, but I can at least give the, the next step to my, my generation, even if it's this generation right now. Well, it all really starts with yourself, so I guess I'm just going to try to be nice to everyone that, you know, needs it, doesn't need it. Just be a nice person. <laughs> Buying food for people, just being the best person you can be. I want to create something interesting that will get people talking. I want to start conversations about, uh, you know, hard topics, uh, things like that, and, you know, other big social issues. If everything works out with me, Lord willing, with football, I would love to help change what's going on with the kids that need help with eating. I would like to be able to encourage my children by making better choices for themselves and that would help, I think, that my next generation. I know exactly how I want to change the world. Um, it'd be cool to find buried treasure or something, and then, or a new discovery, and I'd share it with everyone and it'd be really cool. Do you want to change lives? Then come work with us. Options for Learning teachers guide, encourage, and support students' educational goals. All this while building confidence and critical thinking. Join our team of over 950 employees throughout the San Gabriel Valley. We have infant, toddler, preschool, and school age teaching positions. Teach with us and help change lives. Find out how at optionsforlearning.org, where we don't just teach, we allow children to flourish. Movies and TV shows, we all love them, and some of them have even been shot in Pasadena. We're taking you on a behind-the-scenes tour of the unique locations that set the stage for some of your favorite scenes. Parks and Recreation and A Walk in the Clouds was shot at Pasadena City Hall. Sons of Anarchy featured the first Church of Christ scientists. The Civic Auditorium houses America's Got Talent and the Golden Globes. This building was featured in a boxing match in Pulp Fiction. Marshall School was featured in the movie Transformers. Andy's Coffee Shop was used in Mad Men. Caltech appeared in Beverly Hills Cop. The Gamble House was Doc Brown's house in Back to the Future. The Colorado Street Bridge was featured in La La Land. Pasadena is so attractive as a film location because we have such a unique variety of locations to choose from. We have everything from an abandoned hospital, we have a beautiful Colorado bridge, we have natural park areas, uh, we have all kinds of different types of homes as far as mansions, we have every type you can imagine. The Pasadena Film Office has a three-day turnaround. We offer over a thousand locations for filming, and we have a very friendly film staff here at City of Pasadena Film Office. The fun part of my job is getting to know what's filming currently and knowing about the big movies that are coming out before anybody else does. Some of the recent TV shows we've had here are the HBO show Veep. We've also had Showtime Shameless just yesterday. We also get the uh, Amazon show called Transparent, films here quite a bit. Um, we have a lot of recurring TV series. The only restricted area for filming is Old Pasadena, and that's only on the weekends. So we do receive quite a few requests to film at the Castle Green. It's a very popular location. Um, it's very beautiful. It has the Central Park right next to it, and it's very easy logistically to film there. Welcome to the Castle Green. We have filming all year round. There have been so many films and movies shown here. I mean, TV shows predominate. 
particularly because they can come in and do like three days and don't interrupt most of the people who live here. However, we've had major motion pictures. We've had last big one was probably Live by Night, a Ben Affleck film. We did uh, Last Samurai, uh, The Sting. In terms of TV, NCIS has been here many times. The last one was Last Tycoon, which is coming out on Netflix shortly. People are drawn to this place because it is unique. There's not another place like it in probably Southern California. It was built in 1898, so it's 120 years old. It was a wonderful example of Victorianism, where there was, it was so eclectic. You had the architecture was done in Moorish, Victorian, uh, style and Spanish colonial so that it really brings in a lot of things so people particularly film people like it because it works for everything it works for they, uh, people just come here the location managers come here because they love it they, they love the fact that they can do five or seven shoots in one location because there's a Moorish room which we're standing in a Turkish room, there's a grand salon that is very Victorian, a ballroom, and of course the wonderful exterior which is mainly Spanish colonial. Castle Green is filming 101. It's a place you go to when you want to have an, uh, an exceptional site that is already dressed. Basically, they don't have to do much in the way of dressing this location. We also receive a lot of requests for filming at the Pasadena Museum of History over on Walnut. Uh, it's a great location. We have recurring uh, series Drunk History that films there quite often. This is uh, the steps of Fenez Mansion, which are on the grounds of the Pasadena Museum of History. The mansion was built in 1906, and about six years after it was built, the owner of the mansion, Eva Scott Fenez, entered into her first film contract with D.W. Griffith. He filmed a 17-minute short film here known as The Queen's Necklace. Uh, it was a silent film, of course, and he, the grounds were crawling with people dressed up in medieval costumes, holding up false trumpets, fair maidens, and such. Mrs. Fenez continued her love affair with the movies, and over the next decade, she hosted several more films here, such luminaries as Douglas Fairbanks, Tom Mix, Harry Carey, they all filmed here at the gardens. And Mrs. Fenez has in the archives at the Pasadena Museum of History in her personal photo albums, signed photos from many of these stars, as well as notations saying how much she enjoyed having them on the grounds at the museum. The museum has kept up the tradition of having filming on the grounds of Fenez Mansion. And over the years, it stood in for the White House many times. We've hosted scenes from the West Wing here. Most recently, The Social Network by David Fincher was filmed here, the children's TV show, Gortimer Gibbons. And the biggest one that I've ever seen was Beyonce's formation video. Fenya's mansion stood in as a Southern Gothic plantation house, and it's almost unrecognizable. They did such an incredible job dressing it and changing it to, to look like it. It's amazing what Hollywood can do. Historical authenticity, I think, is obviously key for so many directors who come here. And this mansion, you know, we've been very careful to preserve it to the 1905-1906 vision as when it was built. You know, it interests me that Hollywood directors will go to such great length to find a period location. Pasadena has a charm that can't be replicated, and they have a lot of big, beautiful houses <laughs> as well. And you can mimic many different settings, I think, in this area, from the East Coast to the Midwest. Um, it, it's really got it all in terms of architecture and its gardens as well. We've shown you just a few of the many film and TV locations in Pasadena. So make sure to take a tour for yourself, because even if you're not a movie star, you can feel like you're walking in the steps of one. Here's your events calendar for the month of August. CatCon on August 12th through 13th at the Pasadena Convention Center. The Michael Bryan Back to School event on August 13th at the Jackie Robinson Community Center. The 2017 Monster Drawing Rally on August 13th at the Armory Center for the Arts. The Centennial Square Boxing Show on August 25th at Pasadena City Hall. BrickFest Live LEGO Fan Experience on August 26th through 27th at the Pasadena Convention Center.
summer jazz concerts ongoing through August in Roman's Courtyard, concerts in the park at both the Levitt Pavilion and the Pasadena Senior Center through August. That's just a few of the great events happening in Pasadena during the month of August. There's always something happening in Pasadena, so make sure to check back with us monthly for a new episode. Find us on social media or at pasadenamedia.org. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Pasadena Media.